More moopers. Well, today I've been building uh, a computer for a customer, and thought I'd show you what I was using. This is the Gigabyte motherboard I used, which is a uh, G41MT S2P. This is one of the newer revisions of a G41M chipset board. It uses a uh, four-phase CPU power, which apparently makes the thermal uh, situation a whole lot better. This board, obviously I've installed most of the stuff in the machine. I've got the hard drive in here. It's a 500 gigabyte Western Digital. Up there is an LG DVD drive that I actually had to snag from one of my machines because the one we bought for her was IDE, and this board doesn't have IDE. Luckily, I have lots of drives, so it doesn't matter. Thing has a. Uh, show you one of the RAM sticks here. It is a. Uh, it uses some Kingston 1066 DDR3 memory, uh, four gigabytes of it, and this Kingston, these particular Kingston sticks have Elpida chips on them. So, and Elpida is what uh, A Data uses a lot for their RAM, and I've used A Data RAM for a while as well. Four gigs, two RAM slots. There's the chipset heatsink right there. I put a mass cool ball bearing. Uh, Heat sink on here because these Intel heat sinks that come with uh, their CPUs these days are garbage. Mostly because of these right here, these plastic pins. These things actually warp your motherboard, so you don't want to use those. What I bought was in a box someplace one of these. Mass Cool makes excellent so socket 775 coolers, and that's what this board is. It's a socket 775. I put a Pentium dual core in here uh, because uh, this customer is going to be using this computer for financial work. So, what's the point of an i7? Lol. <laughs> oh no, I can save Excel sheets 0.5 seconds faster. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, yeah. I also put a mass cool fan up, up here for the hard drives. And, uh, yeah. Windows 7 is going to be going on this machine. Windows 7 Home Premium, 64 bit. And there you have it. I just thought I'd show you what I'm working on. I'll show you some more of this computer later once it starts up and it's working. And we'll see how it runs. But we'll take a look more at the board now. The book is the board's the main attraction of this machine. Oh yeah, power supply. I put an LS I put an Ultra LSP 550 watt in here because those are pretty damn good power supplies. They have good circuitry in them. Despite what some people troll about on my videos. <laughs> okay, this board's got PS2, serial, VGA for onboard video, which is what's going to be used on this board since there are no PCI cards installed, because there is no need to have any. Four USB ports, Ethernet, onboard sound. Now you notice this empty space up here, there's no parallel built into the board. But, there is a header for it down there next to the sysfan, as you can see where it says LPT down there. This is the USB 2.0 version of this board, because the USB 3.0 version was getting bad reviews. Probably because of buggy chipsets, because USB 3 is so new, but what do you expect? That's what's in the machine. Once the machine's booted up and has Windows installed, I'll have to uh, show you the rest. So, uh, yeah. Alright, the computer is all put together. This is the same Cooler Master case that I used for a uh, my second setup, at least I used to use it. Everything's all together in there. So, time to start it up and see if the board functions properly and test the RAM. Since that's just a good measure, I'm going to use an Ubuntu disk So, because this has Memtest 86 on it. So, let's struggle to get the disk out first. And just end up saying screw it and pulling it out in a very non-conventional way. <laughs> 
Okay, here I have a monitor I recently required from my friend Mike, which is a Gateway VX700. It appears to have a Trinitron CRT in it. It's very nice, so... Let's put the Ubuntu disc in. So that's, this is the first power-up right here. It appears to be good. Let's put the Ubuntu disc in. I gotta get to the BIOS setup. All right, we got to the Phoenix BIOS. All right, so we go to the motherboard intelligent tweaker. Everything looks normal. And you get the Western Digital hard drive in there along with the uh, DVD. Hard disk boot priority. There's only one hard disk in there. This, this board actually has hybrid EFI on it, so it can use EFI methods to start up. So EFI is actually becoming pretty popular, or at least pretty usable on boards, it looks like. You can actually turn off the HDD Smart capability. I haven't, I, that's the same thing that's on the Pentium 3 over there. Looks like everything's where it's supposed to be. Wow. That should be maxed out right there. <laughs> okay. H pet mode should be sixty four bit. Everything seems to be looking good in here so far. CPU temperature is 19 degrees, 18 degrees. So that cooler is doing an excellent job. All right, so I got to figure out which is the. Uh... Okay, I think the boot menu is F12. Yeah, F12 is the boot menu. All right, so I'll boot up from the CD CD drive. There it goes, and it loads the Ubuntu thing here, and then we'll go down to test memory to make sure the RAM is good. But it looks like the RAM is good anyway. But I just want to make sure the mem test doesn't throw up any weird errors on the first try. So it's mem test version 4.0. And this is the Kingston RAM that's in there. I apologize for the flicker, but I'm using an iPod to record this, and I can't really adjust the frame rate on this. Here's what's in the computer. It's a two, it's a twenty, uh, it's a two point five gigahertz uh, Pentium dual core, which is pretty much a Core Two Duo, as you can see there. Chipset's a G41M. Cache latency on the RAM is 66615, which is not bad for DDR3. I've seen a lot worse, mainly the CL9s being worse. I think the RAM is good, so I think it's uh, safe to... Uh, uh, this drive that I put in here was actually in a working computer, so I'm going to... Uh, clone the drive to another one with this computer, uh, deban the drive, and then install Windows on it. So, yeah. And here the computer is just uh, doing its thing with part with uh, um, Clonezilla right there. Working just great. So I'm going to let that disk clone then I'm going to deband the 500 gig drive. Then I'm going to install this customer's copy of Windows on there, and then we will have a working computer. Okay, got deband running on this machine now. And the way I wipe disks is with PRNG stream, eight rounds, and that is very secure with disks. The throughput's pretty high with this processor. Look at that. 
It's pretty fast. So, momentarily, I'll probably be installing Windows 7 once this finishes. All right, and this customer's computer is basically in its the same in its form that it will reach the owner. Of course, I'll have to transfer data once I'm over there and do other things, but I figure I'd show you the finished product that I give to customers for my freelance computer work when I give them a computer bill. So let's turn it on and I'll give you a look. Once I turn the power supply on. There the computer starts up. There you have it. Like how it says detecting IDE drives when there's no IDE header on the board. I guess the BIOS is the same BIOS that was on another board. So as you can see, Windows 7's installed. Windows 7 64 bit. Home premium. <clears throat> now, this machine is not going to even have audio, but it does have the support for it if she so chooses to repurpose the machine at some point. And there you have it. There it goes. Now I'm going to change the resolution of this display because this is far too small. <clears throat> All right, this monitor's at its maximum resolution, 1600 by 1200, which is a little much. So I'm going to put this at I think uh let's try that one and see how it looks. Eh, not too good. I'll do 1024. I'll just do 1152 by 864. No, that looks even worse. How about 1024 by... Go away, Avast. 1024 by 768. There, that's much more readable now. At least... It looks like crap on the screen, though, so... This is what it has in there. It has an Intel GMA 4500 as the onboard graphics. Total available graphics memory is uh, apparently a lot. <laughs> Dedicated video memory is uh, 128 megabytes, and the shared system and the shared yeah shared system memory is 1631 megabytes. And let me change this refresh rate so it's not as annoying to look at. Much nicer. But as you can see, I've installed a few things on here. I've installed Avast for the antivirus because it's the easiest to deal with. <clears throat> you don't have to constantly maintenance it. You can just leave it running there and not worry about it. I've installed Google Chrome because that's the browser I switched her to from Internet Explorer because Internet Explorer, let's face it, she, she said she's concerned about security and Internet, Internet Explorer is not secure at all. Info recorder for burning disks, <clears throat> which she will likely use to back up her uh, financial information and things like that. Team Viewer, in case I ever have to uh, come into this machine remotely later. Foxit Reader for reading PDF files. Smart Defrag for uh, defragmentation of the hard drive, which I have running down here, which is also running the boot time defrag stuff, which is real nice. Of course, this has the 500 gigabyte hard drive in it that's defragging, so there you have it. And I've also changed the theme to Windows Vista, Windows uh, <clears throat> to the basic theme. It used to be on Arrow, which I can change it to if I want to. But <clears throat> I put it on basic because she's going to be using this f for financial information. I should really just put it on classic and leave it like that because this looks like Windows. This is what Windows is supposed to look like. But I figure since she's actually being upgraded it should actually look halfway decent or at least like something a little different so you know
Well, I might just leave it on arrow. Because it does look pretty good that way. But I've also uh, changed the start menu and everything to uh, basically act like Windows XP did. I've taken, I've unpinned everything from the uh, taskbar, so let's say we open Google Chrome here. It will show up as just a regular task, rather than, you know, something different. Now personally, if she's just doing financial information, I'm pretty sure she's not going to care what it looks like. I mean, that's fine <clears throat> for now, I think. I mean, the background should probably be changed, but this is the basic package of a computer that I give to customers. It's essentially a bare installation of Windows with, an with, a, with a really good antivirus and defrag software, and, of course, some uh, extra software just to use the basic fun functionality of the computer, such as a secure web browser and the program to burn uh, disks with since this has an LG DVD drive in it. That will definitely serve a purpose. <clears throat> and Smart Defrag will just keep the disk um, from being too fragmented. So it'll maintenance it properly. Now the thing that I don't like about this is it does have this thing does have VIA audio. But <clears throat> that doesn't really matter because uh, this customer is not going to be using this computer for anything audio related. It's literally going to be like Excel documents of, uh, finan of, your, of finances and things like that. So I think Windows 7 64-bit should last her a good seven years on this computer with, uh, ma with uh, maintenance and upkeep. So yeah, that's the basic package that I give someone when I build them a computer. And I just thought I'd show you that. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll shut down the machine to end the video. So, there you have it. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao.